Awesome. There it is. No exaggeration, this might just be one of the greats for this year. Come and check it out with me. This is the RGT Challenger. Now we've had a few RGTs on the channel before. RGT seems to have been evolving as they release things. It's nice to see most manufacturers listen to input and make modifications. This thing's more equipped for trailing, but it has a few tricks up its sleeve. You're gonna find as we go that there's more and more to be excited about. Comes in three colors. Wood paneling on the picture. And there's a sticker so the wood paneling is optional, which I'm actually happy about. That is so heavy. Crikey, that's heavy. How is this so heavy? I'm guessing there's a radio underneath. Now this looks like a Dumbo RC, but it's a Dumbo RC with a difference. It's RGT branded X48. Plastic wheel, which is okay. It's not that good for grip though, for uh, one-handed driving. We've got channel three and four on the top. The three position switch here. I've got channel eight, channel nine, channel 10. Dip switches here and end points and dual rate for steering and throttle. Four double A's with a JST plug in the bottom, so you could replace this battery holder presumably with a LiPo, but you wouldn't bother. Nickel metal hard drive will do just fine, and a lanyard hole. So that's the layout. It's comfortable enough, and in fact, you know what? I've got a button for each finger here. Thumb can do that guy. Eh? Every single digit of my left hand is in use here. Throttle, three position, channel eight, channel nine, channel 10. You may not choose to do it like that, but this appears to be the intention. And then you've got uh, three and four here and a power button at the start. Interesting radio. Why are there so many channels? This is partly why I wanted to talk to you about this because this is more channels than we usually see, isn't it? The first thing I noticed when I pulled this out of the box was just how heavy it was. And that is on account of the metal axles. You've got plastic outers and ball bearings throughout at least. Metal drive shafts as well. Beefcake links. Now, this thing says that it comes with a winch. There's a fair lead in the front, but actually the winch is on the rear. There's a guide that, that carries it through and there's a servo on the inside. We're gonna get to this in a sec. This suspension, oh, there is a bar actually. You know what? I can see a bar that goes across there. That is actually somewhat functional. Oh, that's interesting. Servo up front, it says it's an RGT branded 25 kilo. There's a metal servo horn and what have we got? Two and a half mil drag link and, uh, and uh, steering link. Now it's using uh, CVDs for the front axles. So you don't get crazy steering angle. This might be my first nitpick on this thing. When you've got a fully loaded car, I wouldn't mind seeing universals that give you that better angle. Even portal axles can do that. That's a design choice they've made. The nice thing about CVD or constant velocity drive is that at all rotations, it's a constant velocity. So with the universal, because of the way that unis work, you get a, a speed up, slow down when you're at full lock, whereas this gives you that constant smooth velocity. Now we have adjustable metal shocks. Ah, and it even has uh, grooves into which your sill can sit. So that's, that's really tidy and I am liking this green. It's full link at each end and full link at the front makes sense because it is actually servo on axle, even though it's vertical, it is attached to the axle. It catches a little bit, a little, but the movement's pretty good, so I'd say that's good enough. That, these big links, metal drive shafts, incidentally, metal telescoping universals, they're not CVDs, so they're the nice strong kind. And you've got metal axle casings. So all around, this is metal where it wants to be, and then plastic where it doesn't. You don't want metal on your skid. You can get, you know, you can get those, um, skid plate protection things you can bolt onto TRX4 or to some of these different models. It's a bad idea. Metal doesn't slide over rocks as easily as this plastic does. I don't know about this plastic in particular. This feels like it's a little bit more brittle than some of the lovely oily, bendy plastics you get in some of the models. Red Cat does it really well. Um, Traxxas does too. 
In fact, I think the whole X-Max is made of that bendy, oily metal. That's why they don't break too much. Having metal, at least, while it's not great, it's got a rounded profile to it. So that'll help on, uh, on clearing rocks. That big tires, vented, no branding on them at all, but they're a Hyrax tread. Uh, they feel they feel kind of like I'm holding a Hyrax G8 compound from Proline, so I think these are actually copies. I can't say for sure, but that's what they feel like and look like. But foams and beadlock, you've got four bolts for the beadlock. And then plastic outers, plastic uh, portal outers and C-hubs, but metal inners and in the center. So it's a very heavy car, but all the weight is down, well, almost all the weight is down low, but the wheels are nice and light. We've got shackles front and rear, yep. <laughs> oh no, this is your body look. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, here we go. This is actually quite fun, eh? Huh? Ooh. Oh, it came with the battery. I didn't know it came with the battery. It actually says on the box, required, but look at that. There's a four amp, four amp, yep, four amp, three S. No way. It's a 4 amp 3S LiPo included. Didn't know it did that. 25C, that's... But it's a hard case. That's downright impressive, eh? Wow! It's a different colour, but it's a WP1060, so it's a 60 amp basic ESC that has a uh, reasonable uh, hold, drag brake. You've got a power switch on top. Now there are a few shifting oh, got spiders. There are a lot of spiders at the moment. There are too many servos here. You've got two speed up here and you've got dig. Their marketing says it's switchable two wheel drive, four wheel drive, but all dig has that because there's a gap between actuation. So dig is locked, front wheel drive only. Then when it's fully engaged as four wheel drive, you've got, so there's four wheel drive. The switchable two wheel drive, four wheel drive is just for when you're in between dig and actuation. In reality, front wheel drive only is really not much use on this thing. Most people when they set up dig prefer it to be a button, so you hold down dig when you want it to lock and then you let go and it pops out and it helps you over obstacles. Because they're advertising this as front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, you'll see now it's just front wheel drive when we're in the center. Then we're in the rear, there's your lock. I would discount that as a feature. But having high and low is good, and it's nearly a double speed per second over first, nearly. Now, we're in first gear at the moment. This first button. That's our, that's our first and second speed. Plenty of go. And it's got a nice, uh, nice slow drag brake. Like it doesn't lock up straight away. It, it's a good progression. And, plenty of kick. This is the beauty of a uh, 35 turn. Just talk for days. So the rest of it, the controls will be for lights, but also for this snazzy rear winch. Now the winch sits just there. It's on a cable and it's in a hard, uh, a hard cable line. So that should keep your winch cable untwisted and happy. Okay, after some trial and error, I've got this radio worked out. First thing you should know is that the winch is done with the buttons on top. That's out, that's in. Why they didn't do it on a three position switch, I suppose, is because they had a dig to worry about. In any case, when I first uh, pulled this out, this thing came off in my hand. The little, uh, the cable goes through the hook and then comes up and crimps. It wasn't crimped properly and so the wire was frayed and it all came out and this came out in my hand. I've tied a bowline with the cable using pliers on the magnifiers so I could see what I was doing, it's tight. And then I just uh, finished it off with fabric tape because I don't have any of the fresh crimp rings available right now. This means I'm not going to hurt myself on the, on the cable and it's quite functional. So that's the cable. As far as how strong it is, let's just pull it out a bit. Now this is fighting the drag brake. That's plenty strong, man. That's a crazy strong winch. I bet it can hoik ho itself, I bet. Okay, so we're off the ground, as you can see. Yep, lifts itself. 
That's downright impressive that is. That's just a little servo winch there, but gee, she's got some boogie. Now remember that's on 12 volts. While we're back there, uh, second button down, that turns your uh, spot, your um, bar light on. Light bar is the word I'm after. One press turns it on, another press makes it flash, third press turns it off. And the audio you're hearing is coming from the receiver, it's not coming from the radio. This bottom button lights up when you press it, the receiver acknowledges it, but there's nothing plugged into that channel, that's channel 10. That's an available channel that's spare, so if you wanted to, say, install a winch into the front, you could. Just make it one of the single motor ones, so that you can pull the cable out without using any motor, and it'll just, it'll let you spool if you're gentle. And then press the button to drag it back in, then you press it to stop it. Not a lot of configuration on the radio, but that gives you that. And even though it tends not in use, you still have the dip switch. These are all reverse channels, so you can uh, adjust it there. That's the only adjustment you get, but that's what you've got. I can confirm that where it currently sits at about 80 out of 100 is good. Throttle is fine. Trim is actually pretty good as well. So this comes set up ready to go. I haven't checked all the screws, but there needs to be thread lock in any screw that's going uh, into a metal base. So you want to hope there's thread lock on these diff cover bolts, particularly on this uh, servo horn here. Time will tell. They've used lock nuts uh, wherever possible. And the other thing I didn't mention was this transmission grants a 6.6% overdrive to the front. So as far as having all the features for a fun machine, this thing really does seem to have a lot going for it. Portals, plenty of clearance, plenty of down low weight, not a lot of weight up top, and dig. I'm still not sold on this rear suspension, but it does work. The, um, the sway bar does work. You've got laid down shocks, so it is still nice and flush. And there's no questioning the fact that it's pretty. We've even got uh, wheel wells here, front and rear. This is quite impressive. There's the 550 motor, it's 35. 35 turn. That's what I would have picked for a 550. Do you know why? Longer motors, uh, the same turns as 540 versus 550. Your longer motors are a bit slower to spool up, so you've got slightly uh, slower acceleration because there's more rotating mass. It, use, it draws less power though, so with that uh, less punch you get a saving on uh, power consumption, but you get more torque. The characteristics of a 35 turn 550 is that this is a bit of a lazy lug of a motor, but you watch, the drag brake on this will be absolutely superb because that's beautiful for a 550. I see a heap of adjustment points for suspension. The rear suspension is quite laid down. If you wanted stiffer suspension, standing them up would be a good idea. Unfortunately, they're already at the maximum upright position. They can only go forward. There's a gap in the, uh, in the wheel well to allow it that movement, but I would have liked to have seen the position of this shock to be somewhere in the middle, like if this whole thing was back a bit, so that you could stand the shocks up a little bit more if you wanted, if you wanted better resistance near the end of the stroke, because this will give you some resistance, but the more it compresses, the less resistance you'll get, the more laid down it is. And upright at front is the correct answer. That actually is what you want. And look, you do have most of your weight up the front. There is space to mount a small battery in there. And of course your larger battery cage in the rear. The fact that this thing all comes with a giant 3S battery, I haven't seen that before from RGT. It makes me excited for the future because RGT are making better and better things. Think back with me for a sec. We reviewed the RGT Pioneer and I've got a whole playlist just there that shows the evolution of that model. It started with some flaws and we made it better and better. And now it's one of the best performing out of the box with free or nearly free mods that we did. You could do it all free and you've got a really capable crawler. The RGT Rescuer, the EX86190, there's the, oh, there's the playlist for that because I've got a few videos on it now. That's possibly one of the most fun out of the box, full, full featured machines I've got. It doesn't have an interior though, nor does this. Although we do have a video coming soon where we're going to do all the upgrades available for the Rescuer. Those parts are coming, so I'm looking forward to doing that because I'd like to round that thing out. But as a TRX4 alternative, that thing was great. RGT continues to build great cars and this, well I haven't driven it yet, but just looking at it, uh, it's downright impressive. Even though, did you notice 
the cable management even, how tidy it is. It's all wrapped. I say we get this thing out onto the trail. In fact, let's stick it over the six problems. Let's just see how good this thing really is. This is problem one of six. Let's see how the challenger handles this challenge. Oh, are we in first gear? Now we are. Oh, one last thing. I like Dumbo RC and by extension RGT. They give you a light as confirmation when it's engaged. I wish other radios did that. That's great. Okay, problem one. So overdrive should help. These fake Hyrax tires should be pretty good. They're a harder compound than the Proline stuff, but it's a heavy vehicle. I should have dug then. Now, see how it rolled back then? You don't have drag brake. Uh, the drag brake doesn't come on super strongly, so that's one downside of this ESC. They could have spent $30 more on going with a 1080 instead of a 1060, and that would have been better. That would have stopped us from rolling back. That might be the single upgrade you do if you get this car and you want to crawl with it. She's a heavy beastie though. That's better. So line choice matters, and that second attempt was better. Ay ay ay. No, maybe it wasn't. She's a hefty one, this. I haven't weighed it, but it'll be, uh, it'll be the heaviest crawler out of the box, I su suspect, out of all the ones we've looked at in recent times. I love that we've got metal unis underneath. Oh, yeah, I'd like to turn down the response on this thing as well. I've just locked dig so I can hopefully recover this time. I wish dig was a button because I would have used it previously, but it's uh, a little inconvenient. It's a little inconvenient as a lever because when you're trying to feather the throttle, it's just, it's hard to actuate that button without getting a bit out of shape, without bumping the throttle. So locking, or oh, even free spooling here might be all right. I don't want it pushing forward, I just want it pulling. I'm gonna engage again, I'm gonna lock, I don't want it rolling back and we should be able to pull around successfully there we go even just freewheeling now sometimes you have to reverse to engage or disengage the dig all the way but although that looked messy that was a clean finish middle of summer here not that hot honestly but it's been a very wet year with uh, El Nino We've gotten all the rain and uh, my American friends have gotten some rain, but really all the heat and dry. On this problem, we're gonna witness one of the challenges. It's a 313 mil, uh, 313 mil wheelbase, which is completely standard. This is one of the challenges of having a very heavy rig. You need good tires, but sometimes steep, smooth rock can defeat a machine that a lighter machine would have uh, just been able to walk up. So while I'm going on about weight, you know how you can get brass upgrades for cars? Getting the weight on the axles is good, to a point. Keeping your wheels nice and light is good as well. So this thing has done that beautifully. There we go, and it has plastic in the right places. But some of these brass upgrades you can buy where you can get, uh, you know, like brass spacers or um, brass bumper mounts, brass battery trays, anything that puts brass up on the chassis, that's bad. You don't want that because it increases your suspended mass. See, we've got dig and hole, it just squatted down like that. It's a nice strong servo. I didn't expect it would be this good. We popped out a dig now. Although I need to reverse, you listen, there's going to be a click. I'm just going to gently reverse, listen for the click. Hasn't clicked yet. Oh, I don't like how much that's taking. Come on, click. There, there was a click then. No, there wasn't. I'm having trouble getting it out of, out of dig. There we go, there was a click then. That's what I was waiting for. Not ideal. 
So although it did it cleanly, I'd like to see it uh, disengage more readily. I also have a sneaking suspicion this overdrive... Oh, it's probably just me. Ooh, that was a hard landing. If you buy this and you do that, this part of the body is going to crack first. It lands really hard and because of the molding, there's just, there's a lot of tension there on the Lexan. Lexan's usually lovely and flexible, but because of all the extra stuff they're bolted on, that right there is going to be a problem. Over time, it's, uh, it's going to degrade. Anyway, let's have a go here. Oh yeah, so what I was saying a problem too was the weight of this vehicle can work against it because it's got to haul every bit of mass over a problem. So some weight down low is good, that's what I was saying, but too much weight is not. Now there's a line I can take with some cars on this problem, problem three, which is to come up to the right here, but even though we've got nice balance of weight down low, it is still quite top, it feels top heavy. It's not. I think it's just that it's really heavy all around. It wants to roll. So it's got all the tricks this thing, but at the moment it feels a bit like the uh, Vanquish Phoenix in that, oh look, it's not disengaging. Because there's pressure, we need to roll forward. There, you hear that? It's, um, I'm not a huge fan of this dig mechanism. Uh, it's got all the tricks, but it doesn't quite have the geometry to, uh, to follow up on its apparent capability. Here, yeah, somewhere in here we might be able to, yeah, like this. I'm not afraid to give it a little bit, given we've got a nice solid transmission. What I've seen of RGT's gears and general drivetrain so far in recent trucks has actually been quite good. Oh, sorry. The flies are bugging me. But I don't think we're going to get problem three somehow. One last try with one more line. Yeah, it had to, it had to actually get up then. I'm just going to try it again. Sometimes it's coming nice and shallow. I love the approach angle. There's no bumper in the way. Here. No, that rear has to come up out of the hole. Problem three is out. Moving on. Now this is problem four. At this point, I'm thinking this is going to be a lovely, fun car. It's going to be durable. But a super, a super capable crawler, it may not be. And that might seem surprising because it has. Nice tyres, the bead locks, portals, good clearance, weight down low, dig, uh, and a tough drivetrain. They're all ingredients for a, a good time on the rocks, but its weight right now is the difference between it pulling forward out of this and falling back to the right. It should be able to pull out, but instead it did that. I knew it was going to happen. Every bit of weight you add is is a weight that needs to be hauled over problems, like I was saying before, over obstacles. And that becomes an issue. I've stayed a bit high, even though it's not what we need. Gee, I'd like to see it pull up across here. This is a good time for dig, but I don't want to dig in because I won't be able to uh, disengage it. There we go. Look at that. Ah, we nearly fell. I've got flies buzzing in my eyes right now. It's um, it's difficult to concentrate. It's a strong servo, that's for sure. I'll give it that. No, not what we want. Here we go. Nope, here we don't go. Gee, it's close though. We might get this. There we are. Oh, I 
don't know that we can count this as done even if I do it from here. No, we won't. It's not going to do it. I am liking this servo though. It isn't fast, but it's got plenty of strength and it's only warm at the moment. That's good. Okay, into problem five. For all that weight down low, it really uh, rolls. This is not, it's not a bad crawler. It's, uh, it is getting frustrating though, I will say that. It certainly looks good on paper. It looks good physically too. And I think as a, just a general trail fun machine, I can just see someone having an absolute blast with it. It's not a hugely technically capable machine, as much as that looks amazing. It's only just on the edge of uh, wanting to fall, which is a shame. But these rollovers are uh, uh, not fun. That, see, that front row is actually still in the air. There we go. Good. A super impressive approach and departure angle means that little transition from the previous rocks to the start of this was very smooth. And what it's doing right now is better than many trucks. Ah, uh, well, what it was doing. Huh. I actually meant to reverse then. My mistake. That servo's starting to fade now too. There we go, there we go. Just pretty much got to ride the ridge on this one. It's only just going to do it if it does it. Gee, we're close to falling backwards. Very close to falling. I'm actually still holding forward throttle right now because if I come off it, it's going to roll. Mm. Problem five is actually an easy problem for many crawlers. The heavier Taller ones do struggle. There you go. So it did it, it was a question of getting line. Okie dokie, problem six. I honestly don't know. I haven't really got a feel whether it's gonna do six. It may. Yeah, that servo's really fading now. Look, it is, it's a big car to turn. And if you get this and you decide to crawl with it, more power to you, go for it. But budget for a replacement servo when you cook this one. You don't have to change it straight away. But I think you will cook it. Oh, that poor roof. She still doesn't feel very warm, but I don't think it's long for this world with this level of use. We are asking a lot of it. Even though it's apparently designed for it, the car, it's uh... That weight is really... No, I'm not gonna do it. That's all right. As a technical fun machine, this thing's very good. As a general trail machine, this thing's also very good. I love the two-speed. Servo's warm, but really fading now after that attempt. Is it a technically proficient crawler? No. It could be, but I don't think it's designed to be. There's just too much going on. This high roof is gonna crack. There's too much weight up top. And even though weight down low is good, there can be too much of a good thing. This does struggle. We've done problems one, two, and just barely five. So it gets a passing grade. It's a good crawler, not a great crawler. As far as an all-round trail truck with all the bells and whistles, it's pretty good. Should you buy this or the Rescuer though, with its diff lock and its two speed, no rear winch, but arguably more capable, I've got to say, I'd probably buy the Rescuer. 
anything from RGT that has these complex controllers though, it's a good recipe for fun. I quite like this car and I can recommend it particularly for the price. It was about 750 Australian dollars. That's still a couple of hundred dollars ahead of a TRX4. And for me, the value is probably there, honestly, even if you didn't include the battery that they included, which was a surprise. So um, I like it. I don't love it as a crawler, but it's a fun car. And so now you know that's the RGT EX86170 or the RGT Challenger. It may ship under HSP or FTX or possibly some other brands. I've got to say, I've enjoyed looking at this thing. And if you have too, leave me a like. Subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss out on what's coming. We have a bunch of stuff and I'll look forward to seeing you again right here on RCTNT really soon. Thank you for watching. Oh, that poor roof. Ooh. Ooh. It's, uh.